next thing I want to put you guys through is post and get super global arrays. So what we're going to do is that under this, um, you could create a new, let's just create a new project again. And this time around, of course, yes, it's going to be a shortcut. And from a shortcut, we're going to create um, posts. Let's call this um, get, and, get and posts. Super global arrays. Okay. Now, as usual, uh, specifically, we're going to choose the version that conforms to the installed, to the installed, of course, on the system. So here, we click on next. Get and post super global arrays. Yes. Click on finish. Okay, so we have that up here now. Now, in here, we're going to create a new PHP script. Yeah, PHP script. Yes, it should be under get and push Google arrays. Now, here, let's call this get and posts. Okay, so we have our script ready. Now, um, previously we used this um, template. It's still going to be useful in this specific um, section. So let's just copy this and we take to our super global script and then we click on paste. Now, let's change this title to get post and post super global arrays okay yeah super global arrays then um, that's our title now we're going to be needing this um, script previously designed for learning tables and forms but we're going to change our our label there. We're going to change it to get and post post super global. Now, uh, I want to make a little change to these things as well. And um, let's just make this, um, let's insert a table row here. So this will be a table row. Uh, table row. Now, another very good thing you guys should know here is uh, that within this table row, you can actually make some arguments there. Put align um, methods and say, yeah, align center. You can center your several of these sub tags. Your TR and TD are child elements of table, while form, form used for imputing username and password, they are all child elements of the form, the form object. Okay, so now. I told you here previously that in uh, in the form you could have methods. You have methods. You know, one of the methods is name. And specifically, if you give it a name for purposes of identifying, so we can call this get post. Okay. Now, the other thing, very important thing you can do to this supply to this form object is the method. Yes. Now, this specific method can either be get or post. Like what, take for instance, what this um, compiler is giving us. 
telling us that we have two choices, gate and post. And the attribute is a method, the data type is a known, the default value it gets, the enumerated values, that's the possible values that can be supplied is gate and post. The purpose of this tutorial is to give us a clear insight on what this get and post is. Okay, we're going to test some code and see the difference between the two methods. So let's start with get. Alright, get, yes. Okay, so we have get. Now, optionally, you could have action. The action method uh, executes a script in question, depending, yes, depending. And be very careful when you close the form here because it may automatically close what you've already closed here. So all you have to do is just nicely take this out. Okay, we don't really need that. This is what we need here. The form name is get post. The method is get. The action is blank because there's no script to execute. It is going to be a script, another script. You can supply the name of the script here in PHP, but for now, let's just leave it per se. Okay, now after we end our table, we're going to let's initiate uh, a PHP. Okay, you can initiate a PHP script here down here and um, call it PHP. Yeah. Okay. Now, uh, we're going to declare two variables. We we'll call it username. I've already told. Uh, we've been through the lesson or the training on uh, declaring variables. I'll refer to some of these um, videos in the description below. So, uh, for the sake of those who have not been following the tutorial on PHP, you can just refer to those videos. Okay, so um, let's declare our username or rather password. Yeah, okay. Now we want to supply something here. Oh, don't forget to put your semicolon. Now, we want to supply something, we want to equate this variable to a specific method. And what is the name of so this method, the get method? So, in order to do that, we're just going to place a variable here and call underscore post. Okay. Username. No, not post. We are not doing the post now. We're doing the get. Okay. So, the same thing applies here. We're going to place our variable here and call it uh, get yes the get methods because the get is what is in the form. So over here we're going to supply a password yes. So this is what we've done. Let me just briefly explain this. Now, we declare this username. This username stands for this username here. Yeah, this username, this specific username here. Okay, that's the name. That's the importance of the name. The name here must correspond to the name here on the script. Okay, if you supply a different name that is here, that carries this label here is going to be a problem because the variable you are trying to refer to might not be found. The compiler might give up an error that uh, this is not found, this is not found, that is not found. So everything has to correspond. The same thing goes from here. The password corresponds to the password here, and of course here too. So the next thing we're going to do now is that we are going to try and output the script the variable name coming up from this typed form okay so let's say echo echo username username 
Okay. Let's put a quotation mark there and see the, the types using the is okay. Let's put the column here and the dot. password is put password yes Semicolon. Okay. Now, otherwise, if we're going to be having issues with this string because the training strings um, sometimes comes in handy. Okay, it's giving us a cross sign, so there's something missing that needs to be corrected. Okay. Yes. Okay. So this is um, this closes here. And then this closes where here. Okay. I don't think we need this here. Yes. I think that's where the error was. We're not supposed to have that particular quotation. But that's why that error was um, being indicated. So. Let's try and run this code and see. What we're trying to achieve is that we want to achieve the get method, super global array. Super global arrays are arrays are kind of general arrays that entrap that specifically entraps variables, moving variables. And the get is distinct from the post, which we're going to see very shortly. Okay, let's try and run this code now and see how it uh, executes. On the server, save there. Yeah. Okay, so we're still running on our server. Okay, now it's giving us a specific error. It says notice on defined index username. And the reason why it's saying this is because the username has not been declared before use okay so all we have to do is um take this code let's try and reposition this code and see what it brings up let's reposition it say at the top okay now uh then let's initially declare an empty username and password yes let's declare an empty username and password let's see this is blank with the semicolon and then this is blank as well with the semicolon So we've successfully uh, declared our username and password. Okay, let's save. Now let's try and run the script again and see if it still gives us that error. Okay, we get away from this error that is um, indicating username. Uh, on defined index username and password how do we get away from that okay this is what we do now if you observe we've only used the username and the password 
we have not made use of this submit button which is one of the variables supplied by our phone object okay for purposes of getting uh, the get uh, of course the get method here so all all we have to simply do now is that uh, we are going to introduce a new variable into this um variable already declared variables and i want to introduce you guys to the if he said if he said if you open the bracket he said if he said then within this we place the get okay yeah we select the get if he said get and the get we place submit within it in this uh, format or construction submit and the name must correspond to the submit button here that's very important okay so now that we've done this we're going to open and close the coily brace not the round one but the coily one the one that is coily yes this is the opening and then we ensure we close it here at the ending of the execution yeah okay so what this does is that it encapsulates all this which um captures the submit event button we can describe this as an event body that if two things can either happen or probably three the button remains the same nothing happens or the button is pressed two things two major things two major events so here we are trying to uh, introduce an algorithm that captures the click event of the submit button yes this particular code here does that okay let's save and go back to the script and refresh and see if there's going to be any change okay so now that error has disappeared so whenever you are coding in php and you encounter undefined index then you should know that you have probably not encapsulated a third or fourth or nth variable okay for instance now in this case we have not made use of the submit button so there is no event for it so there is no reason for us to be declaring the get for the username and password if it set function one of the major functions in php helps us check the event of clicking the submit button and not just that it also considers the get now this is where the get comes in okay now we want the username and password to be declared not just to be pointed in but to be outputted on the script or on the browser such that anytime someone types a username and password you can just capture the event and not just username and password depending on the number of variables that has been declared with the form because this form right now has a username password yes and it also has uh, other uh, variables here now there is possibility of adding a third variable okay so but we're not going to go into that let's just focus on this and test it on the browser so let's assume we, we type um g h underscore y and then we place let's just start in a random variable here and we click on the submit button okay see so now it's telling us this the typed username is is isgh underscore y and the password is this in order to make this clearer uh we're going to let's try and introduce some sort of um bold uh term here let's say um assuming we put this here let's say we put uh we can put strong here just to make the, the type front um appear in a bold format okay then you close it the tag the strong strong is uh one of the tags used for outputting 
bold, bold character right within uh, PHP algorithm. Okay, so here password is yes this, and then we put this there and we save. Let's see the difference here. Okay, so this is the type username is this, and the password is this. Okay, so here we have successfully used the get. This is the username, and then this is the password. We successfully used this script to generate um, the get. Now, before we go, before I end this section, I want you to take a look at this. Now, in the browser, because we are using the get, the difference, the major difference between the get and the post which we're about to know now, the get sends all the information sent from these input boxes, these um, methods of the form, it sends it into the browser. So if you take a very careful look at the browser, you're going to see that this same username here, ghy, and then this, this is it, this, this username here, gh underscore y, and the password, which is is ending with wd okay all these ending with wd shows in the browser and that's what get does get reviews everything you type on the forms in the browser it doesn't hide it now this is the technology google started with. It started as a simple engine where you can type things and then you can see what is being typed it's taken as a variable and then it is taken up for further processing you know but right now google has improved its technology now what is being typed is encrypted you know, most of them comes with uh, encryption because of course you know internet is growing every day so the next thing i want to do now is that i want to change this thing to the post let's see the difference and how do we do this every code is still going to be the same but we'll simply change this to post post okay then we go up here we change this to post as well. Post. We change this to post to post. Then we change this also to post. Yes. Okay. Make sure you save. Then go back and let's just type something else here and see. Okay. Let's say we type um, SDF. Then we type some random information here. Okay, so now if you look very well into the browser, you discover that the, the the password or and the username is not showing because the username here is this, and then the password is this. Okay, now. Uh, there's still one more thing we need to do. We need to change. Okay, so let's test the post now. We've been able to change all the necessary uh, units to post. First of all, we ensure that the method here changes from get to post. Then we also went up here and changed our variable here that if is set under the if is set we change it to post and of course these two two variables so the next thing we're going to do now is try and run it on the server and see the output yeah so here let's test any variable of our choice let's say we just call this ELTY underscore UI and then we just give this a new random variable and stop this. Now look at the string URL. The string URL does not bring any variable, unlike the get. The get you could clearly see what was typed in the boxes, these two input boxes. So this is just a distinct difference between get and post. Get reveals all the informations from the form into the browser, whilst the post does not do that.